God wants to know you. God wants to know you. And it is a matter of importance. You need to know whatever you do, God wants to know you. And his knowledge of you cannot be substituted by anything else. Yeah. It's, it goes deep. And so, uh, what you call what is important to you, to him. And so we need, we need to speak over 2024 and begin to declare certain things that are going to change. Yeah? So I'm going to tell you some of the things that, that came to my spirit and the direction of the house. And you need to understand that over the years that some people have been concerned that LCF has this culture of... Um, putting a theme out. Somebody was saying, Pastor, why do you change the vision of the church every year? We don't change the vision of the church every year. It's the same vision. Thousands of people. Uh, somebody, is, somebody is helping. Thousands of what? Of people from all cultural and nationality backgrounds. All types of people experiencing God vividly. Then arising transformed to spearhead revival worldwide. Those are the five points that define us. But you see, every year you need to fine-tune and to focus your attention on how you feel that journey is, is going to be specified. And so last year, let me show you what we said last year. Uh, uh, Ma Marvin will help me on, um, on the slides here. So, not last year, we are, we are still in it. This is how we, we, we arranged 2023. Building fruitful family, faithful followers, and fearless fighters. Now talk to your neighbor for one minute. How have you done on this issue? Fruitful family, faithful followers. Ask them, are you, are you, are you in family? Are you in family? Are you connecting? Are you belonging? In a fruitful way? Can I, can I kick a few things? I could preach all day long here. Just because you are procreated into a family and given a family name does not mean you have successfully integrated into that family and made the connection that God requires of you. Do you understand? That God sets the solitary in families. And God wants us to, to be fruitful in our family setting. And it's never easy. These things are never easy. But God wants us to be fruitful family. Not just biological family, but church family. And the key words are belonging. Yeah? Belonging to a family. Embracing your position, your place submitting to the headships of the families that God puts you. So God says, honor your father and mother. And uh, in church, it becomes honoring your leaders. Intentionally, it's a choice you make. It's a choice you make. Hmm? So we need to be fruitful there. Secondly, faithful followers. And I'll delve a little into that. I don't know whether, I'll, yeah, I need to delve into that today, if I can. And then, Faithful followers is about understanding. You need to understand, much as a miracle that you are, most of what you need to put into practice, somebody else is doing. And so you need to open your eyes and follow leaders. Follow people in different spheres of life, different areas, certainly in, in your church and ministry life, God raises leaders over you. Leadership is of God. And so when he commits us to family, he wants us to learn followership. And here at Liberty, as we particularly go forward and continue to press for thousands of people, we know that one of the reasons churches fail to grow legitimately to thousands is people fail to follow. People fail to follow leadership. And then we end up with weak alliances, which God cannot multiply. 
Finally, it's about fearless fighters. It's about becoming disciplined as a soldier, understanding that there is a, an army aspect of life. There is a sense in which you need to structure yourself, order yourself like a soldier, and get disciplined and fight the battles of life. And so, this came out of a threefold man mandate that God has given this house as we relaunched after COVID. God said to us, do not relaunch, uh, rather do not um, uh, relocate, because we needed to relocate the church. I said, do not relocate, relaunch. So we didn't just, just change addresses, we changed how we think. We got a threefold instruction. Number one, start a family. Number two, teach them to follow. Number three, raise an army. That's where these three come from. Faithful family, we started a family. So LCF is a family. Yeah? It is not a train station. Where you come to, because you're on your way somewhere and it happens right now that this is a convenient place for you to catch your next train. This is meant to be a family. It's not a gang. It's not a gang, it's not a walkthrough, it's not a lounge, it's not a concourse. This is a family. Amen? Huh? <laughs> the little children need a bit of space, I guess. This is a family. We started a family, we are going to intentionally, continually remind you that LCF is a family. Yeah, families are eternal. They don't stop and end. You belong. And, and we, we have so much reinstallation of how we think there. Today's, most of today's families are illegitimate. They would never pass the Jewish test. Can I talk to you guys? I've started preaching, by the way. Most of what we call families would never pass the Bible test. All, all we have are birth certificates, and we share dinner, and we live at the same address, but when we really face the God test of whether we are family, God is saying, what are you guys doing? Is this a family? Or is it Clapham Junction? Station where trains are whizzing through and stopping if they must, and so your home, your family is meant to be a place you belong. And God's idea of families from the Jewish perspective was a continuity for generationally. There must be a clear for generational continuity. A father, a son, a son of the son, and the son of the son of the son. And they would be called households. So they lead, typically live together in an extended compound and they would be up to 300. Are you, are, are you still my friend or have I already lost you? Oh, no, 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 pastor. The modern way is I'm leaving home. I'm leaving home. Yes, I'm not saying we all live together in the same place, but you never quite leave home because the story continues through you dad's story and mom's anointing and their encounters and you receive them and you worship their God and you go to their church and you catch their anointing and you make sure your generation carries that grace and then you pass it on to your children and when God sees four generations we have what is called a movement now some of you are struggling so hard to even contain that because as far as Western culture and modern mindsets are concerned, you are, you are given birth to so you may live and set up your own thing. And most people, usually after university, are done with home. Can't wait to delete your dad and eradicate your mother and connect with your pades. We used to call them pades, Uganda style. I don't know what they call them here. And so, you find that people belong to the village and live at your house. The children, they belong to the village and live at the house. 
They belong to the network of friends online and they have dinner at your house. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you guys okay? Yeah, part of it is the problem that um, not even we parents have known how to construct sustainable families. But here at LC, if we are going to give it a start. Yeah. And how it looks like is we plant churches endlessly so that we can show you that in 2023, we had two congregations, north and south. North and south. In 2040, we'll have a, a, about 3,000 churches around the world. And, uh, and one of them is pastored by Christian. Tongoy. The other one is pastored by, is this one, is this one the Marvin or I mix their names up? That one. Jerome. Uh, sorry, I, I mixed up. I, that's how I end up calling. Ma Jerome! Ma, 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 ma Jerome. No, 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 no. You're calling Marvin. So this is Jerome. It would be great to hear Pastor Jerome. And he's part of a, of a legacy of God's grace. It's part of a legacy of God's grace starting in 1991 here in this country when LCF is planted and the Spirit of God comes upon me and then upon Victor and Victor passes that anointing to his children and there is, and names can change. When you hear the movements in the earth now of um, churches. Now, one of the, our fascinations has been Doug Heward Mills, who has, what, 6,000 churches. And there are so many that they've even started denominations. So they have, like, I think now they, they are looking for 20, they have 20 denominations. <laughs> 20 denominations across the whole world. Many of them in thousands of memberships. They have different bishops and overseers and, and they keep planting churches. But they all, all carry the same grace. The same anointing. It becomes so strong and so powerful that they can decide we bind in Jesus' name. They make a decree in Australia and the earthquake is felt in, in Ghana. <laughs> Do you understand? So we, we, are, we have been doing it wrong. We thought Christianity is about, uh, oh, I, I've outgrown this church. I feel like another church now. It's not that way. <laughs> so when we talk about faithful followers, we are attempting Mission Impossible here. Why? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this LCF? We have not yet seen the glory of God. Our cities are dying. Divorce is as bad in church, if not worse now, statistically, than the world. Christians don't know how to marry. All raise children. We die of the same diseases. So what has happened? No, we, we took the Bible and left the culture. Culture is meant to be family. It's meant to be generational. Do you understand? So this is a mission that we have embraced and said yes to. And... We know there are examples in the earth of churches that are multi-generational. And you find an old papa who planted the church in 1981. And when he shows up in the church, in Generation 4 church, the children are wearing stuff he would never wear, but they celebrate him because he's the initial carrier of the mantle that they carry and they have repackaged that grace and are now expressing it in a language 25 year old can understand but the guy is about 80 years old 
Do you understand? It is an amazing thing. It is an amazing, amazing thing. So, I'm talking freely. I said today I need to talk to you as a father. I talk to you as a father. So, deep breath, deep breath, deep breath, everybody. Are you with me so far? So, this is what it's about. So, we stopped running LCF as a church. We are building a movement. We are building a movement. Movement is a four-generational work of God in which people catch the grace and anointing of the generation before them and run with it and run with that grace and continue to plant. Our plan, our hope was to plant two other churches before we, we close this year. God, I think slowed us down. But these churches have already been planted in our hearts. Yeah. And they're going to be led by much younger leaders. Yeah. And then we'll plant out of those. And then we'll plant again. God's will, God willing. One step at a time. So tell your neighbor it's called a movement. Movement. God blesses movement. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then he establishes a movement called Israel. Israel is a movement, not just a nation. Yeah? Okay. So, um, where are we going this year? Where are we going this year? 2024, God gave me one word. And so I, I always sit and design these things. Multiply. That's the word he gave. Multiply. And all my days have I wrestled with this word. Multiply. So today I came to talk to you about multiply and multiplication. Can we talk? 2024, we are putting on multiplication. Now, please understand when a family meets. This is a family meeting now. And this is Mose talking to you. It's the old man talking to you. You listen to me. Yeah? Because I have also been listening to those that God has been putting over me. And they have been listening. And we are caught up in a global movement. We are a church in our own right, yet we are caught up in a spiritual movement that is called missional discipleship. God is a God of families. And so these are words I've picked up from my fathers in the earth. And I find out in this global movement, how do I receive what particular expression of God does LCF have to carry for 2024? What must I carry? And I must bring that here and deposit it on you and you are to listen to me and try and follow me. Yeah? Whatever else the angel tells you in the night. <laughs> Please understand. So tell your neighbor you are under orders to multiply 2024 is a year of multiplication. And you see, in a way, God gives it to you, in another you pick it up. It's in the air. Multiplication. Somebody say multiplication. Say it after. Declare it multiplication. Now, Genesis 1.28. Genesis 1.28. I want to take you to a Good old well, well known verse, uh, Genesis 1 28. And God blessed them. This is God creating man in his image and likeness, Genesis 1 28. And the Bible says, God blessed them. Somebody said, God bless them. So we're talking of the blessing of God. The blessing of God has five ingredients in it, it has five elements. So when God blessed them, what did he do? 
he, what did he say to them? Number one, he said, be fruitful. So fruitfulness is part of the blessing of God. Number two, he said, multiply. So multiplication is part of the blessing of God. Number three, he said, fill the earth. So filling is part of the blessing of God. And then he said, subdue it. And he said, have dominion. So there are five elements to the blessing of God. Five. And this year, I felt that although we had three areas, fruitful family, uh, what was the other one? Faithful followers. And, uh, and fearless fighters. There was a lot of emphasis on fruitfulness. The first thing to do is fruitfulness. Now, how many of you loved mathematics in school? Or oh, a couple. I can see a few, a few hands going up. <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't have a, like a love-hate relationship at all. I was just in the middle there. I just knew we were not going to be good friends. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch fruitfulness by touching on multiplication, starting to talk about multiplication. Uh, this year, every time the word multiplication has been spoken, my spirit has jumped. Multiplication. And I'm thinking, God, I like multiplication. Yeah. Now, in, in mathematics, there are four. I wish Jonathan was here so he can help me. I don't know who else is a good mathematician. What are those elements? When we say addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, what are those things called? Mm-hmm. Bone mass. Bone mass is a process, a mathematical process. But what are those four elements? The four ways in with which you work with numbers is addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. Which one of the four is most potent? Multiplication. It's the most potent of the three. Yeah. Because if you want a number to grow quickly, you multiply. Addition has a growth element. The other two take away. When you say take away, you are, you are reducing. When you say divide, you are depleting. But when you say add or multiply, you are growing. And the faster way to grow things is by multiplication. So God commands Adam to be fruitful. Secondly, to multiply. And three, to fill the earth and to subdue it and have dominion. Now, in our journey together, we need to understand the importance of these five elements. But I fail to speak to you about multiplication today. Uh, God is saying, and in discipleship, discipleship, we talk about multiplication at all levels. Multiplication at every level. Somebody speak it. Multiplication at every level. Multiplication in every area. Increase. We've sung the song here. Hmm? He said, God bless me indeed. When Jabez prayed. He says, bless me Lord. Multiply me. Increase me. So, in multiplication, there are three elements. Three elements in the in the multiplication process. I can go to slide four. Let's jump three for a second and go to slide four. There are four elements. Three elements in multiplication. Um, Number one is the multiplier. Then there's what they call the multiplicand, and the product. Now we have gone into deep maths. Your nightmare has come to pass. Right here in church, you thought you were done with multiple, with, with maths, and it is catching. <laughs> five times three, <coughs> five times three is eighteen. Is is what? Are you sure? 
That's why some of you got no certificates in mathematics. Five times three is what? Okay, five times three is 15. Five is called the multiplier. The first letter is the multiplier. The second one is called the multiplicand. And what you get is called the product. Strictly speaking, by the way, I thought you can swap the five and three. No. The first one is the multiplier. So if I give you five baskets of fruit, that is a multiplicand. The fruit is the multiplicand. And the baskets, number of baskets is the multiplier. You can't swap the two. Yeah, so the multiplicand is the product I want to multiply, is the, is the item I need to multiply. It's called a multiplicand. So, please now understand the importance of this. If the multiplicand is zero, no amount of multiplying will help it. Hmm? Zero times any number is still zero. So before we multiply, we need to look at the multiplicand and make sure that we have defined it clearly. Do you understand? Because if you multiply rubbish, we will have rubbish everywhere. Well, if you multiply fear, we have fear everywhere. So we need to first of all understand the multiplicand has got to be something we want to multiply. It's got to be safe. It's got to be something that we want to increase in number. And if the multiplicand is a negative and you multiply it, you are increasing more negativity. These are just meditative thoughts that we need to embrace. So ask your neighbor, are you safe to multiply? <laughs> Will the world be a safer, better place if we multiply you? Huh? Well, tell them it is God's agenda to multiply you anyway. Amen. It is. It is. As far, God, as far as God is concerned, you are a multiplicand. He has chosen you for multiplication. Yeah. We're going to have more of Pastor Derek about. Yeah. We're going to have more Apollos running around. God has declared that if you are his son or his daughter, you must multiply. So sort out your issues, but multiply. Sort out your mess, but multiply. Yeah. And, and it's that amazing Reality. I don't know whether you ever played football. I did a bit. One of my problems is my legs were always small. And so, <laughs> I was a tiny boy right from the beginning. I put on a little bit of weight now. But you see, we, we typically make a line. And uh, we have people to choose a team. And say, so and so is mine, so on. I was always one of those ones they choose last. <laughs> because of the size of the legs. <laughs> they did not trust. <laughs> These legs, they didn't think they would help the team too far. I was not great at physique and running, but you, you just needed to position me right. And I would score. I knew how to hit the ball and direct it in the right place. So typically, I would stand in one place and wait for the ball. Usually on the right-hand side and not far from the goal. Once I got that ball, you, should, you, you would have heard the shouting, 
mukakume 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 muka which is which is i'm trying to find the english version of this basically attack him destroy him because they knew if i turn these little stick legs knew how to place the ball in the right place yeah yeah uh, but I'm, i'm making the point that god has chosen you on his team yeah with those little legs of yours and the issues and the battles god has chosen you and so he said god are you sure are you sure you want me on the team yes there is something about you the bible calls christians the chosen ones he says you did not choose me i chose you there is something about you and my spirit is inside of you and i want to multiply you and increase your presence in the earth and your influence and i'm going to teach you my ways and equip you to do my things and to carry my grace into the nations so multiplication is your better work on your little legs but you need to understand god has chosen you for multiplication clap your hands if you receive yeah god has need of you and god has a place for you in what he is about to do everybody say multiplication please understand god is not licensing the mess but he's showing there's something bigger than you than the issues and you can overcome those issues and break those barriers in Jesus name and you can carry the glory of God in your generation i believe i believe everyone here is amazing and i don't care what you think about yourself or what you think about that person next to you or are far from you <laughs> everybody here i believe we fall in the david category of a man after god's own heart amen yeah i believe so man after god's own heart was not something david died with it was a prototype that will continue in the earth when you really look at david he wasn't perfect but he was a man after god's own heart and saul seems to do less mess but he was a problem so the fact that you open your mouth and confess Christ as lord means you are a man after god's own heart Amen. there is a giant killer inside of you there is a kingdom builder inside of you there is a warrior inside of you if you had the gospel and said yes there's something special about you yeah if this sunday you are, you woke up and dressed to come to church something amazing about you yeah and i'm going to chase after that thing your mc leader is going to chase after that thing we are going to chase after you we are going to drag you into prayer meetings drag you into seminars drag you into outreaches drag you into everything we know you need to become the person that god wants you to become because you're a man after god's own heart do you understand the agenda yeah because god saying multiply multiply so every one of us is meant to become a little nation a little nation you are meant to have followers we should say there goes veronica with her followers there is a day there goes tendo with his posse groups of people following you because you are multi deploying they are learning to think like you think talk like you talk pray like you pray because you are multiplying at every level we need to multiply i wish i had all day somebody shout multiply if you're hearing me yeah you are the multiplicand and the original multiplicand is christ and christ is in you the hope of glory that is why you have become multiplicable because of this man that god sent amongst us and he walked amongst us 
and showed us how to do life. And we're going to follow him. Um, this is a very meant to be more strategic message than, than motivational. I need, I need to bring another idea in. Go back to, to the slide before. Now, God, God, I mean the multiply is also... So these are the five elements. We talked about them. Fruitfulness, multiplication, feeling, subduing, dominion. You cannot rule without multiplication. You cannot. Do you see subduing and dominion? <coughs> come after multiplication and feeling and fruitfulness. So there are five mandates there. And they need to, you can't leave them to the people at the front here. Every one of us is meant to be a filler. Every one of us is meant to be fruitful. Every one of us is meant to be uh, standing in these functions by the grace of God. Now, I want to take you into a bit of history. Because as I was praying, saying, Lord, what is this multiplication? You need to understand the principle of multiplication is the reason the world has advanced. It's a principle by which advancement has happened in the earth. Now, I was reading an article, and this guy was saying how before the year 1760, you didn't want to be here. And we take it for granted that we wake up and we can look in the mirror and we can press a button and the light comes on and turn it up and water runs and we go and press a button and the, the cooker comes on, poo, and now you're charging your phone and you're flicking switches and you think you're entitled to this stuff. No, you are just a harvester of multipliers. This world that we're enjoying, the microphone I'm speaking into and the clothes I'm wearing are because people went into fruitfulness. And I'm not talking about spiritual life. I'm talking about general life. But you, we need to stop here and humble ourselves concerning where the world has come from. Go to that slide, Marvin, which has an industrial revolution. 1760, something happened to our world. Now, some of you are better historians than I. I just hated history. Too many dates. <laughs> Too many names. I wanted the maths and, and gases and, and uh, those products. <laughs> anyway, 1760, you did not want to be here. And 1760 is not too far away. Imagine going backwards into the 16s and then the 15s and then the 14s and then the 13s. The world was a bad place to live. There was no electricity. Hmm? There was mud everywhere. Hospitals didn't exist. Cars did not exist. <laughs> this week I have been ill. I have been ill. Since you last saw me here, I've been ill for seven days. And I don't do illness typically. I've lived a fairly healthy life. I've not contributed too much to the national health budget of this country. <laughs> I've not drawn a lot of money from there. But I've had awkward things lately, but these seven days, I was just surprised at how sick I became. Sick! As in my wife, she will tell you I was as sick as a parrot! <laughs> as they say, I looked at myself and said, you're a grown-up man, how can you be this sick? <laughs> Over nothing. Absolutely. There were no bugs. I thought initially, is it COVID? I took a COVID test. Negative. COVID denied me. He said, I don't know the man. I'm not living in him. Said, okay, COVID is out of. What is this bug? Sneeze, cough, pain. Pain in my throat more than I can understand. I, have, I sleep in an upright. I've slept upright every day since it's Sunday. Sit up. I wake up multiple times. I walk around the house like I'm a thief in my own house. I am switching on kettles. 
I am pain relieving. I am cough mixturing. I am God Almighty. I am waking my wife up. She has to work in the day. And <laughs> while I, I pick up smidgets of sleep through the day, yet I kept her awake all, all, all night. And I'm thinking, what is this thing? All research shows there is no infection. It is my own body turning against me. Yeah. As far as biology goes, I have been digesting my stomach and digesting my throat. It's called acid reflux. The stuff I used to digest food, this time I am the digester, I am the one being digested by my own stomach. And it's ridiculous. You take a bit of gaviscon, for goodness sake, and the stomach should shut up and behave. No! Spoon after spoon, hour after hour, pain, pain, pain. To the point I said, will I ever be healed? You know, have anyone, if you've been ill and you, you come to a point when you wonder, does medicine cure anyone? <laughs> does prayer heal? So when today you are pro prophesying that the devil has been trying to prove God does not heal, this week I said, Lord, do, do you heal the sick? Because I prayed sustained hours to get out of this situation. Ha! And thank God for the internet. Because in between my bouts, I open and I read. Because my doctors have scheduled me. And then they shut down for Christmas. And the doctor is seeing me on Wednesday. And I call, finally see the doctor. I'm telling the doctor, I am, I am so sick. He says, you will talk to the nurse. Because I had a nurse's appointment. So I ran to the nurse. I said, doctor told me. She said, no, you talk to the doctor. So between the two of them, I'm back at home. And my doctor is called Google. And you know how Dr. Google can be. But you see, in, before 17, in those years, there was nothing to refer to, no one to help you. The, in some of those, they didn't even know bacteria existed. People just died. It's ridiculous, guys. But the condition I had this week would kill you. In those days. Yeah. Who kill you? You just die because you don't know what to do. And there's no medication in the world. No one knows what exactly is going on with you. People, life expectancy is in their 30s. 1970, 60, just recently. Talking about the Industrial Revolution. How the world changed from 1760. This guy was saying, if somebody in 1760 was to wake up today, <laughs> they would be in complete shock. They would be in complete shock. But you see, in 1760, everybody ate from their own plate food that they had grown in their own garden and cooked in a pan they made themselves. Every family lived for itself. People were trying to exist. Industrialization is a recent miracle. Everyone was unto themselves. You, you put up your own house. And then people began to think systems. And I was looking at the names. I don't recognize most of the people. People who changed our world to make it what it is today. But the principle, my friend, was multiplication. Multiplication. And some of us are in 2023, but inside of us, we think like 1760 people. We are trying to micro govern our own lives and we we don't understand the need to lift up our eyes because what started to change the world is people saying how does so and so do it how, how, 
How did he build his house? And people begin to compare notes. And then they learned that there are people who are good at building. They called them builders. <laughs> and then we, we found people who care for the sick and we call them nurses and doctors. And the world began to specialize by imitation and multiplication. Let us multiply the doctors. So instead of you going to the potato plantation, eh, pay somebody who goes to the potato plantation, let him have a lot of land and grow potatoes. Yes. You specialize in something else, but it was all about multiplication. Let's have more of them. Let's educate them. Let's teach them. Let's watch it. How? Write it down. Multiply it. Systemize it. Systemize it. Stop being arrogant and understand somebody knows it better than you. Submit yourself and be taught by somebody else. And you see, it's because people began to think like that. And Communities and nations that did not think multiplication continue to walk around wearing a little piece of cloth to cover their genitals and go hunting, everyone hunting for their own food. While other people created beef industries. <laughs> and then someone shows up with a cloth and they say, what did, What's that? And people had taken, had learned how to, to weave. They started with things like grass. I thought, oh, you wish it could last. And then thinkers come in. And it's about listening, learning, teaching, multiplication. And they would, they, they stopped working in their own homes and they built a, a community shed. And they called it a factory. In the end. And the whole village decides people make our clothes, clothes, spinning wool and cotton to create thread, then weaving the thread to create garments, then trimming to actually dress up. At the heart of it all was multiplication. How do, do, do we do this better? How do we do it faster? How do we do more of it? Hmm? Liberty. Come on. How do we do this better? Who does it best at LCF? Who should we be listening to? Who should? What is it I am hiding from the world? What problem am I here to solve? How can I serve this community so we can go to the next level? Yeah? So, the, the advent of coal, this digging up of coal, now we are trying to get rid of coal, but coal mining... It wasn't one person digging while everybody else is watching them. They pulled together. They started coal industries, oil and gas, electricity. Now we are in nuclear and electricity. Actually, we've gone to internet and renewables. There's even talk of quantum, quantum science. We're talking quantum computers now. That's where we're going. But no one does it alone. And the spirit here is multiplication. Let's do it bigger. Let's do it better. Let's do it faster. Not what is the shortest way out. How do I cut corners and, and avoid inconvenience? The industrial revolution was characterized by hard work. Sweat. Hours and hours. Women began to work for the first time. Before they would just sit home and wait for the pig or whatever the, honey, the husband hunted the day. No, they began to work 
women began to work. That is why even up to now, women are still behind. By the way, historically, women started to work later in life. They were just supposed to sit at home and have babies. And the problem is babies kept dying, so they would have multiple, multiple babies. You have 30 babies, and hopefully in 15 years you have 10 left, because the others died of diseases. Then, at a certain point, my friends, there was so much work created through thought that even children needed to work. Children, children labor began. People, children from age six were in factories because the world had learned how to make garments and how to stitch them and how to, to create products. Am I preaching too long here? Do you understand? And so children were in factories. It is later that people begin to come up with rights and say, no, 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 we are being exploited. No, 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 the children can't be doing this. So we begin to say, no, 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 children should be at school. These things came in because multiplication was happening. Yeah. By the time they say, let's go get Africans and, and bring them on ships. It's because they created such a volume of thinking and understanding and they could not clear their own work. The innovators and thinkers had to buy land and set up factories and they had to multiply <coughs> so many resources and there was not enough manpower. Go get the Africans. That's how they came for us. <laughs> that's how the slave trade started we need labor we need workers it wasn't a case of let's just get people to subjugate and punish no they wanted people to work their farms hours after hours after hours of work 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 the things we take for granted all this stuff and what was the country behind this? So Britain, Great Britain, was the source of the industrial reserve. This little island taught the world to think. I thought, I told myself I want to get excited because last time I did, I lost my voice. But to move from coal to oil and gas to electricity, thinking, how do we do it? How do we faster? Where do we get people? They invented sciences and began to teach each other. Today's church is full of lazy believers waiting to go to heaven. Waiting to go to heaven. Even in worship teams, call them for a practice. They have 10,000 reasons they can't come. Call them for prayer meetings. They have 10,000 reasons they can't pray. Give them a marriage, they will mess it. Give them children, they will mess them up. I'm sorry. Most of our churches are small because we are anti-industrial. We kill development. We kill growth. You find a church growing, 300 people. My God, God is beginning to move. Something can happen there. They split it up. They fight each other. They refuse to give. They refuse to pray. Then they say, God has moved on. And they are moving on to another thing. I'm sorry. If, this, if history had been given to the church... As we think today, the revolution would have never happened. We need to work hard and think hard and put people in teams and missional communities. We need to say, why are people not getting saved? What do we do? How do we touch women? How do we touch young people? How do we work with our children? What are we going to do? We need thinkers. We need industrialists. Spiritual industrialists. To bring the church into revival. 
And we can never say, God send more of your spirit. God is saying, no, I have sent my spirit upon you without measure. But you are not engaging your brains. You are dealing in division instead of multiplication. You are subtractors. And at best you add. I am sorry I've lost half of my friends in this building. I need to close this. Andrew is playing to tell me I'm done. He's doing his industrial part. Because things have to end somewhere. It's a culture of multiplication. Let me show you a car. Show, show these guys a car. I'm going to show you a car. This is called the Ford Model T. How many of you have had Ford Model T? This car... <laughs> this car was created by Henry Ford, the owner of Ford Motor Company. This car is the reason most of us drive. Ford would not rest. He said, it's not enough that I have made a car and can sit in it and move around. It's not enough that I move around in a car. I must multiply it. I must multiply it. So, to teach others what you have thought, people who have invented cameras and and cars and, and keyboards and basic thinkers. So Ford decided he's going to make so many of these cars that everybody in America may drive. So he formed the Model T. And he, he was the first inventor to create what is called the conveyor belt. And so conveyor belts were set up where one person just fits a carburetor. That's all he knows. He's a specialist at carburetors. So a thing shows up, he sticks a carburetor on, screws it on, that's it. Specializations. They made 15 million cars. And the profit he made, he gave back to the people by charging less for the car until there were 15 million Ford Model T's around the world. Huh? Because you see, the thought was cars are too difficult and too expensive. But by multiplication, as a mindset, one man broke that culture. And now cars are everywhere. Everything can be multiplied. But we need a culture of multiplication. How do I increase my capacity with God? How do I increase my capacity with people? How do I increase my capacity to communicate? How do I increase my capacity to lead? How can I leave an impact? How can I make it easier for the next person after me? How can I grow my church? How can I grow this ministry? Not, nom, 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 go. I am here to see what they are doing. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Please stand to your feet. We need to get out of here. God is saying to liberty, multiply. Begin to see yourself as a multiplicand. Who you are must become multiplied. Become a study. Teach somebody what you do. Learn from somebody how they do it. How can I take my church to the next level? Where do I see a need? I'll show you because God showed me that we, we need to break it down into eight areas of multiplication. Go into that next week. Lift up your hand. Tell God I'm ready to multiply. Get rid of that. It's gone even weird. I don't know what you've done. 
Lift up your hands. And that's why we become diseased. That's why communities become so full of rubbish. Because instead of producing model T's, we are thinking of, I want to marry wife number six. Are you a fool? Are you a dog? That you go procreating around the whole village. This is what killed Africa. We are too busy marrying 10,000 women instead of thinking what products can we bring to the market. And we sit down and drink all day. And it's the women making the alcohol. The men are sitting wearing little loin clothes to cover their genitals. Drinking alcohol all day. While men are creating ships to come and buy you for nothing and float you over to the west because they are looking for labor. I'm so sorry, guys, to get passionate. Like, but some of us, God was telling me, there are people in liberty who are in complete bondage. But the thing which is destroying you is because you are too busy <coughs> doing too little. That's why you've grown stupid habits. <coughs> and self-destructive behavior. God wants you to lift up and say, how can I multiply everything that I am? Father, we are ready for 2024. And we declare it a year of multiplication. <coughs> everything we do well, we are going to do better. And we're going to train others to do better. Whatever you've given us, we are going to steward so that it can become a blessing to our nation, our city. We are going to grow this church into thousands. Yeah. Thousands, not customers coming. But thinkers and workers, young people, youth, young adults, older people, everyone working, everyone praying, everyone believing, everyone dreaming. This is who we are. North and south. Women and men. Everybody. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. We cast off laxity. We put on the spirit of the revolutionaries who changed our world and created industrialization and mechanization. Many of them died, killed by their own machines which they were trying to make. Some lost their arms, some lost their eyes because they were saying, what can I do to make sure everybody can enjoy what I enjoy? Bless us, we pray, Father.